Kirsty TV is about the power of sharing stories that heal ourselves and heal others. My guests share their most intimate stories and lessons learned along the way. My guest today, Renee Lawless, is an actress playing Catherine Cryer in the own drama, Tyler Perry's The Haves and Have Nots. She has been through her share of highs and lows on her journey to the bright lights of Hollywood and is here to share her story with us today. So once you get there with success, okay. people think that it was all easy. It happened in overnight success. Isn't that what we wow. all hear? If you consider 30 years an overnight success, then I'm an overnight success. <laughs> 30 years overnight success. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, you know, I was asked not too long ago, how does one prepare for success? And I don't think anyone a good pre question. prepares for success, you know? I think we, um, you just have to believe in yourself and do the work and take pride in your work. And you have to accept all the failures as well as all the rewards. And that makes us who you, who you are. And I guess that's what preps us for success. What have been the toughest times? Oh, <laughs> the times where I didn't really know where that next meal was going to come from. I'm not saying that I didn't have my family to fall back on if I needed that, yeah. but there comes a time when you still have to make those ends meet yourself. You know, um, yeah, once you get to 25, 35, exactly. You know, you you know when you're in your 30s, you're not going to call, call mom, mom and dad every time you're like, okay, how am I going to pay my rent this month? Um, yeah, so I'm, I, I don't want to make it sound like I was out there on my own, but I was, yeah. you know, and there was a time in my life where I thought, I have to get out of here. Uh, it was in the early 2000s, actually. I was living in New York City. I had already been on Broadway. I had already had uh, a lot of regional success in theater. Um, I considered myself a working actor. But then there were some lean years, you know, New York is very finicky. You can be literally riding high one minute. Basically, it's like Hollywood. Yeah. Riding high one minute and at the bottom of the barrel the next. And I was in that lean period. Um, a little financially um, in that I was having to depend on what I considered a day job. And that was not making me happy um, because I wasn't working in my craft. And then I got a little overwhelmed and I thought, I have to get out of here. I, I have to leave New York for a little bit. And I had planned to be away for about three months. And ironically, I, I left New York and uh, two weeks later, I got a call for another show and I wind up being with that show on a national regional touring level for about three years. Two weeks, literally, after I left New York City. It's quite amazing along the journey. There are lots of moments that are fortuitous. Serendipity, synchronicity right, right. plays a big role. And right. sometimes we're pushing, thinking we want something now, and it doesn't happen till later. Do you feel like, in a lot of ways, everything worked out as if divinely timed? I believe everything that's happened in my life, good or bad, is divinely timed. Mm -hmm. I believe in the great divine. I believe in the Lord plans everything, and he's the controller of my life. Yeah. It's much like, have you ever seen a cross-stitch sampler? Mm -hmm. And you look at this beautiful picture and how yeah. gorgeous it is. And if you ever turn it over, <laughs> chaos. <it's> chaos. <laughs> it is absolutely chaos how you could think anything like that could have made something so beautiful yeah and that's the way our lives are you know totally if we were just above looking down we think oh sure that's gonna have to get well that's all gonna but we don't see that and we get all yeah. wrapped up and if we would just you know breathe yeah it's all gonna look beautiful it's in all the end. going to look beautiful in the end I exactly like that. Exactly. great analogy so what is one of the hardest things to deal with when it comes to the highs and lows and ups and downs of this business? To get up the next day after the door has closed the night before or the day before. Mm. Yeah. And if you, you have to believe enough in yourself that this is, this is not, rejection is not a no, it's a not now. Yeah. I booked, I auditioned for Wicked, um, but I didn't get it till exactly one year later. And they were saying not now today, but maybe tomorrow. And one year later was my tomorrow. 
But you can have like my big thing is a bit of apple pie, get under the doona, a bit of self. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. You can hit the Krispy Kreme donut the night before. Trust me, you can you can do the twenty four hour Krispy Kreme hot ones and pull in and have a field day. And you can, yeah. I, mean, I mean, I have like a twelve set program. I can sit there and get uh, get upset and jump up and down and get angry and bitter. But that's only if the audition or the, the job was something I really, really, yeah, really, really dream. want. The dream was. Yeah. But I mean, you know, you do so many of these. Sometimes it just becomes, it's just a way of life. You don't think about it. But then mm-hmm. after a while of doing them, you're thinking, wow, is something ever going to pop? Is something ever going to break? Yeah. And it will. But you yeah. still have to get up the next day and do it all over again and believe that it will happen. How do you not take it personally? Because I think in acting, I mean, there's a lot of people out there that their dream is something else. So maybe it's being an entrepreneur, um, a singer, mm-hmm. all kinds of things. But I do think it's tough in acting that a lot of people internalize it, that it's about they didn't want me, they didn't choose me, or I don't look a certain way. Right. How do you build your self-esteem and confidence not to be attached to that, not to take it personally? In the beginning... It's very difficult not to do that. You just do that because we're humans. And because actors, we're very vulnerable. We're, we're dealing with our emotion. We're dealing with our heart and our soul. And then there's also an element of looks. Now, I don't mean, is she good looking? Is she not good looking? In this field, sometimes they want the, the girl that's 5'6 and not the girl that's 5'2. And that is 100% out of your control. Mm-hmm. And that's very frustrating because I'll never be 5'6". Yeah. No matter how many heels you put me in, I'm never going to be 5'6". <laughs> and um, you have to learn to completely not think about the things that are completely out of your control. You know, years ago I did pageants. Oh. And um, I was told one time, the girl that wears the crown tonight, if the pageant was held a week from now, those five judges might pick a completely different girl. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't that that girl was the prettiest, it was that girl was the prettiest on that night, you know, so. Once you arrived at success, could you, could, if you can say you arrived, because it's a never ending goal. Right, post, exactly. It? But once you got here, I mean, you're on a network show, how did it feel? I don't know if I was adequately prepared for the overnight notoriety. Mm-hmm. You, you always think you are. Yeah. You think, oh, someone's going to recognize you, wasn't that cute? But then when a mob recognizes you, you're like, <gasps> you know. Um, so that's been exciting, but I don't feel like I, ho- I hope I haven't changed any. Yeah. Um, I hope I'm still the same person. For people starting out who are struggling to go after their dream, mm-hmm. what piece of advice or wisdom would you impart? Keep going, persevere, and know that no matter how many doors shut, no just means not now. I always wanted to be where I am right now. And I truly believed that one day this would happen. But there's always this little voice back here that goes, is that ever going to (laughs) happen? Is it really ever going to happen? Because you wake up, it's going to happen, it's going to happen. But there's always that voice thinking, but it may not, but it may not. But that still doesn't stop you from getting up every day and going, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. But then all of a sudden when it does happen, it's a surprise. It really is. It's a genuine (laughs) surprise. You're like, oh, how did this happen? What did I do? But I forget that I have decades of work behind me, Mm. decades of preparation that have got me to where I am now. Well, and so many people would have given up. They would have thought it's never going to happen. So how do you stay so true to yourself and keep, how do you keep the faith? I truly believed in myself. And I truly believed in what I had to offer. And fortunately, I was surrounded by a group of friends that, that kept me focused as well and, 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 a, and, and my family. Now, you also have to know if you really have talent or not. There's a lot of people that have a lot of belief in themselves and they can't sing, act, <laughs> dance, you know, throw ball, do whatever. They can't do any of that. So what's been one of your biggest life lessons? Wow, one of my biggest life lessons. I have many. I will probably say at the end of the day, you have to answer to God and you have to answer to yourself. And you have to be happy with what you've done and what you do at the end of the day. Mm. Not what other people think of you, not what society thinks of you, and not what um, your coworkers. You have to be happy with yourself. And if you can go to sleep at night knowing 
that you've been truthful, you've been honest, you've been, you've been yourself and nobody else. That's good. Was it all worth it? Oh, every minute, every second. Sometimes when you're in it, you wonder. Yeah. Life is beautiful. We only get one. Make the best of it. What final words of inspiration would you say to anyone else out there chasing their dream? Go for it. Yeah. Chase any dream, whether it's acting, whether it's singing, dancing, being an accountant, being a doctor, being an Olympic gold medalist. You can do anything you set your mind to, anything. Yeah. And if that one goal doesn't work out, trust me, along the way, something else will, will, will pop up and go, oh, that's what I would like. Yeah. Go chase it. Like. Go chase it. High five. Great. I love it. Thanks. Thank you so much Thank for being you, here honey. today. My pleasure. If you're out there chasing your dream, know that it is completely possible. You have to keep the faith and believe in yourself every single day. Keep getting up and keep getting back up after that door gets closed. Rejection and no are just part of the process. I look forward to seeing you next time on Kirsty TV. Don't forget to tweet us, Facebook us, join the conversation and subscribe to the channel below. And meeting Oprah, the first time was very quick. The second time, have you got Second time was Catherine Cryer! You know, you always wanted to get that Oprah. Oh, and she does that. She goes, oh, it's Catherine Cryer! <laughs> you're like, oh my God! Thank you so much. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so I'm just going to turn and do that again.